Hey everyone, Chris, the Thrift Shop Plus. So we're going to go over 10 items that have sold for over $50 here on eBay. There's going to be lots of Bolo items in this list, so you definitely want to tune in to the very end. We're going to do a deep dive on some of these items using WorthPoint and a little bit of history on some of the items. You might find something you've never heard of or something new to discover. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're into selling on eBay, definitely go down there, click the subscribe button. And if you want to click the like button right now, that definitely helps the channel. So if you do enjoy these videos, definitely go down there and click the like button. So let's get right into our first item. I hope everyone is having an amazing week so far. Up first, we got this Cavalier Amazonas women's black leather riding boots now this particular brand isn't a super high-end brand but the fact that riding boots in retail environment are worth a lot of money usually especially ones that are made out of leather you're looking into the hundreds of dollars if you're in the retail sector looking at these brand new so people are looking to buy these used if you're in an equestrian district in your neighborhood your town your city uh, you might want to take another look for these especially if you can find boots that are in really good condition like these ones and these ones sold for $59.99 plus shipping so definitely look out for those when you're out and about and definitely look for those uh, next up we have this derma flash this is new without box this is a replenishment kit three month supply and uh, just for those that sell on Amazon and eBay definitely look out for health and beauty products especially new packaging creams you know soaps all this kind of stuff does sell for good money especially if you look up the certain items uh, luckily for me i was on gated in health and beauty a very long time ago i've had an amazon account for a while so uh, i was on gated some time ago with health and beauty so you might want to look into that if you're not selling on amazon to look at this kind of stuff in both places because sometimes you'll notice that amazon you'll be going for you know a lot more money than on ebay and vice versa you know some things might be going a lot better on ebay so just look out for this kind of stuff at estate sales wholesale environments garage sales uh, even goodwills i found stuff like this health and beauty items that have been sold in case packs bulk uh, you know, perfumes makeup all that kind of stuff and just the one kind of word of warning when dealing with these types of items is to make sure that they are not expired some of these items do expire uh, not all of them but some of them do so just make sure that you're looking out definitely for that when you're sourcing health and beauty products uh, next up is a brand you've probably never heard of it's called dosa uh, this happens to be a scarf and i'm going to show you what the tag looks like so that you're familiar with that uh, what this tag looks like it's a little metal tag and it says dosa on it and i'm pretty sure that's probably not how it's pronounced it's probably pronounced some fancier name than uh, dosa or maybe it is i don't know but definitely look out for this bolo brand of scarves they do scarves i haven't seen them do any other accessories other than scarves this sold for 49.99 plus shipping and if uh we take a look into some of the sales that are on ebay uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here. I'll actually have to do a little copy and pasting here to take a look at this quick here. Um, as we can see, you know, some of them uh, people are trying to get for over $100. Uh, some of these sell in the range between $30 uh, to $100, some of them even more. So just be aware of that. It's just one of those things to look out for, especially if you're at an estate sale or garage sale and you can pick these up for $5 or less. It's one of those brands that you probably never heard of. They don't go for crazy, crazy money, though these are listed for crazy money. Usually these sell between $20 to $100, uh, depending on style and condition. So just uh, look out for Dosa scarves. Uh, next up, we have this hand-woven tapestry. Now, this might be something that a lot of people aren't aware of or into or think that uh, these basically wall rugs when you think of a tapestry that's like when you break it down to its bare definition is basically like a wall rug and uh, there's lots of different ones out there there's a lot of ones that aren't worth that much money but there's a crazy ones that are 
worth an extreme amount of money and we're going to take a look right into worth point right now show you exactly what i'm talking about uh, if you don't have worth point worth point's actually really cool it's about 20 dollars a month it can go back about 12 years i think it goes back even further as we can see here um, some of these items that have gone for crazy crazy money here uh, into the thousands of dollars and you'll have to look these up on a case-by-case -case basis now the the thing that about tapestries that is kind of uh hard to determine is some of these won't even have signatures uh, a lot of these artist ones will will be signed but a lot of these old french ones like this antique one won't be signed and it, it, finding the kind of right you know what where it's from and all that stuff is going to be a real uh, pain to discover but uh, something like this is very quite obvious this is a haunted mansion one from disneyland i'm not sure if they sold these at disneyland but you know something like this salvador dolly you can just basically look at the art and of course it's signed this one happens to have you know a coa uh, but just basically just to to broaden your horizons that's why you watch these videos that i do because i show stuff that you might not think is worth you know money but you know some of these tapestries are worth a pretty crazy amount of money so definitely look out for that uh, this sold for 63.99 we did take a sale on this a plush shipping uh, as you can see here it was easy to tell the artist name on some of these um, there's some Native American ones that go for thousands of dollars uh, as a matter of fact there's some Native American blankets that have gone for over a million dollars Navajo blankets they're not quite tapestries but it's kind of a little bit in the same kind of uh, hand woven motif art kind of uh, uh, things for the Native American Navajo blankets, you know, for the most part, those things are Navajo rugs, I should say. Uh, those things were just used for like daily, they weren't even made as far as uh, for being art pieces, they were more for a daily use. That's why they're, some of them are worth so much money because a lot of those were uh, just beat up over the years. Uh, tapestries, on the other hand, are, are meant to be hung on a wall, therefore, you know, some of them have lasted centuries in some cases, so definitely look out for that kind of stuff. Uh, next up is a Hummel. Everyone knows about Hummels. Hummels are one of the OG collectibles. Uh, when I think about collectibles, most people think about Hummels. I mean, Hummels are even memed in uh, TV shows and movies and things like that. Uh, for the most part, Hummels have really taken a dive over the last 20 years. Hummels were a very popular collector item in the 70s and the early 80s. And they were, you know, well-loved by older generations uh boomers if you <laughs> boomers if you will uh, this one happens to be uh 1948 hummel's been around for a very long time and uh a little bit of a fun fact in history behind hummel's and if i can remember i think i did a video on hummel's and i'll put it up on a link above if i could uh, find that video i did on hummel's but uh, they have a very interesting history uh Berta hummel was a nun who used to draw these very whimsical pictures of children and that's what the, this style comes from and then someone said hey well let's make them out of let's make some figurines out of your drawings and uh, that's where the Goebel company in Germany came into play uh, unfortunately she died at an early age she never saw these uh, Hummel figures that bear her name the success that they they ended up to be uh, you know and a lot of artists suffer that kind of fate uh, like Van Gogh uh, Van Gogh if you will you know um he's one of the artists that you know had a very terrible life and then died almost penniless and his works are worth millions of dollars so you know berta hummel is kind of in that same vein where you know she used to draw, do these drawings and then they made figures out of them and she passed away i forget what what happened with her i think she had an illness or something and uh she didn't quite see these you know go for the the crazy money that they've they've gone to but uh, like I said these things aren't as popular as they are you can find these on pennies on the dollar for the most part will humbles ever come back I'm not quite sure but I will say that some of the older ones are st still keeping some good money they're not going for the thousands of dollars that they used to uh, for those that don't know by the way also um, there is these little symbols in the middle here this one happens to be a V a BV they call it and even though it says 1948, sometimes they use the molds over again, and they just have to, you have to go by the little stamp on the bottom. 
and that stamp has changed many times over the years. Um, I think there's over a dozen stamps and all the stamps correlate to a certain year. Uh, above here, this 203 is the style number. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things to kind of look over and go over to this video. Like I said, I did a separate video on Hummels before, and I think it might've even been for just the Patreon uh, group. Um, I'll go into depth on certain things with the with the Patreon group, and I think that's what I did that video. Uh, but anyways, you know, Hummels, definitely look out for them. So, you know, just to reiterate, sometimes they'll have uh, the, the names on the side. Let me see if this one does. No, sometimes there'll be a little sticker on the side and the base here that'll say the name. This one happens to not say the name, though it says uh, you know, MJ Hummel uh, there, which is the, you know, creator's name. Uh, but what you want to go after, like I said, is this style number 203, 2-0. Uh, the 203 will usually be able to tell you what the name of this is if you look it up on eBay. Uh, 1948, that's stamped here. Um, sometimes isn't the correct date. You always want to go over the little middle stamp that's right here um, so just to look these up. And like I said, um, make sure there's no breakage. Usually people, when they repair these, they, they're not very good at it, and so you'll see glue that has yellowed over the years or just a really bad repair job. So let's say this bird broke off. You'll see like there's a, you'll see a crack and some yellowing or glue. Uh, what's really nice about these is if they're if you find them repaired, you know you can usually tell that they've been repaired. Uh, there's very few people in the world that can actually uh, repair porcelain professionally to make it look like it's never been broken it's kind of actually hard to do especially if you crack it in certain places uh, some people always go as far as uh, repainting certain areas and things like that but you know one of the things to look out for is just breakage cracks and stuff like that so uh, hummels is a very interesting subject to go down and i can go down a rabbit hole with with hummels uh, and like i said if i can remember if to find that video i'll definitely post it in the links below. Uh, next up, we have this Olympic medalist. This is Allison Felix. Uh, these were donated actually by Allison Phoenix. We had a pair of these. Uh, this sold for $54.99. And uh, just to show this, you know, this stuff's kind of out there. One of the hardest things that's going to be for a lot of collectors or resellers to do is to find <laughs> something that's like scribbled on the side and exactly know what this is. Uh, fortunately for us, um, you know, we had these donated personally, so we knew who this was. I mean, good luck trying to figure out what this signature is if you just found this kind of stuff at an estate sale or something. Uh, but I wanted to post this item to show that, you know, uh, Nikes are very easy to look up. There's going to be that six-digit number in the middle there in a dash number. So that 554887 is the style code. Uh, the dash 311 is the colorway so shoes for nike are very easy to, to look up uh, there are tons of fakes out there especially for the higher end nikes so usually if you type up this number and the shoe comes up as like not this kind of shoe usually that's one indication and also um, there's certain areas where the quality is really not there and I'm not a shoe expert by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, just going over some of these things like this number really helps. And uh, they're also in the on the left there. There's a date that indicates like what you know, month and year these were produced. So there's a lot of great information in the tags. That's that. Uh, next up, we have this Persona 4. This is a J uh, animation. I wanted to say Japanimation. Uh, you know I grew up in the 90s when I say Japanimation. Manga was a very popular thing in the 90s. Anyways, uh, this is a used Blu-ray. Um, I want to say we took a best offer for $74 on this. This was used. This wasn't even brand new. Uh, these things sell for like $200 plus on Amazon. And if you have an Amazon app and you're and you're scanning this kind of stuff, uh, usually, you know, if you don't, you can't get a hold of eBay. You can't get into the eBay app. The Amazon app is also a great tool to use for if you're scanning DVD and stuff, because it'll show you, you know, stuff that's worth a lot of money. 
and this is one of those uh, that we just happen to come by it's actually very rare to find blu-rays and dvds for that matter that are go that go for over 50 bucks a piece and uh, i think i'm going to do a video at some point about what dvds to look out for uh, because there's very specific things that if you, even if you're just in a rush and you look at these particular uh, things like studio names there's one particular studio uh, anchor bay that if you know what that looks like you can pull those right off of the the rack and then look them up and usually 75% of the time they're worth you know for $10 especially if you can get them for a dollar uh, but anyways back to this thing you know just always scan DVDs you never know what you're gonna find especially this kind of these odd uh, animation things are usually you know worth picking up and worth looking up for sure uh, next up we have this scrap lot this was 22 karat gold we tested this with a gold acid tester and I'm gonna leave a link below to um, the acid tester so if you're into testing gold and jewelry and uh, you know I'll leave a link to a scale like this one too and uh, this is how we tested this to 22k this actually could have been 24k because my acid test only went up to 22 carat so just to be safe I, I, I did it for 22 carat uh, this thing weighed at 2.05 grams and uh, if you go to a gold calculator you can actually look this up so um, you know you can do by carat so if you know exactly if you got a 14 carat ring and you have the weight you can at least get a let's say it's like five grams here at 14 carat you go calculate it'll tell you it's hundred and forty six dollars if you were just going off the spot value of just the gold itself so if it has a diamond in it or some other jewel or something that's heavy stone you know it might the gold content might be worth a little less so just to factor that kind of stuff in uh, or sometimes it could even be worth more depending on the stone so uh, I'll leave a link to this gold calculator below you should save this in your bookmarks for sure especially if you deal in gold and silver scrap and uh, this is what we sell a lot of this kind of stuff because for the most part these earrings don't sell uh, as fashion jewelry a lot of this stuff is dated and things so we lot up this kind of stuff and sell it uh, as scrap uh, next up we have this flow blue cauldron tureen uh, for those who don't know tureen is basically like an old school serving dish usually stews and soups are put in this that's why they have a ladle and usually they come in three pieces you're gonna see basically these three pieces the body the lid and the ladle you usually don't find the ladle because that thing breaks very easily and uh, you know these some of these things are you know over a hundred years old usually the bottom will have some sort of marking as we can see this is kind of an older one uh, I would say this is this one's probably over a hundred years old we can see there's some crackage in the ladle and I actually you know noted that in the listing uh, this sold for ninety nine dollars basically a hundred dollars plus shipping uh, we'll take a deep dive into terrines on uh worth point and you'll trip out right now Let's look out look how much some of these go for thousands of dollars now of course some of these are like solid silver some of these are antiques but some of them go for crazy crazy amount of money i mean look at this weird fish one eighteen thousand dollars uh, there's some other these other kind of enamel Chinese export ones Chinese collectibles are very very in demand and hot right now so uh, definitely look out for that kind of Asian influenced terrines I mean I can the list goes on and on look at this stuff it's just thousands of dollars so just one of those things to look out for uh, these are gonna be estate sale items though I'm pretty sure some of these will pop up at garage sales or thrift stores uh, usually the silver stuff not so much because people uh, that work at thrift stores and goodwills uh, pretty much know how to spot sterling silver now uh, but something like these lettuce ones that went for I think these went for like 18 grand right here something like this might you know pass an estate sale or a garage sale and just be like oh these are just these crazy you know cabbage you know terrines that mother had and I don't want them anymore they're ugly and eighteen thousand dollars you know there we go this sold in 2015 so 
this crazy stuff's out there so i mean that's why you watch these videos to learn about stuff like terrains maybe you've never heard of this i you know i really didn't know much about these either until we started to get some of these in so uh, if you do appreciate what i'm doing definitely click the like button and that really helps out the algorithm for sure so this sold for a hundred dollars this was kind of uh interesting to ship you know they're all porcelain some of them are um uh, what, are the, what I was going to say, I was going to say like bone ceramic, but it's called something else. And uh, it slips, uh, slips my tongue right now. Bone china, where they grind up like pieces of bones to strengthen the china in the holding process. But anyways, definitely check that out. Uh, next up, we have this David Anderson Norway Sterling Silver Necklace. This sold for $145.00. Um, for some that don't know, you know, a lot of the things are going to be marked, you know, what they are. This one happens to be D-A. There's a lot of resources online, especially when looking up uh, hallmarks and jeweler's marks on the back of jewelry. Uh, if you're unsure about anything, always look to make sure that there's marks. Sometimes even on the little clasps, clasps right here. Uh, sometimes in these little tiny crevices they'll be marked or even right here they'll be marked so just kind of look that up uh, some of David Anderson's stuff goes for a pretty good amount of money uh, so there's definitely that kind of stuff to look out for and if you don't have a jeweler's loop I highly suggest buying one I'll leave a link an Amazon link below uh, for the jeweler loop that I use it's a two power one that has a light on it so definitely look those up uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Please go down there and click the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Uh, let me know in the comments below if uh, you've learned anything new here, especially maybe from Tureens or any of this other kind of stuff that we showed. Uh, I definitely appreciate your support and your likes and comments are definitely help out the algorithm. And uh, definitely go down there and click the subscribe button if you're on the channel. Uh, once again, I'm Chris with Fisher Hustler. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next time.